Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Ed Schlesinger. I'm the Benjamin T. Rome Dean of the Whiting School of Engineering, and it is truly my great pleasure to welcome you to the installation of Susanna Tone as the Marshall Salon Faculty Scholar. Thank you all for being here today to celebrate this special occasion. I want to offer particularly warm welcome and a special welcome to our guest of honor, Susanna, uh, to her fiance, Aaron, there you are, uh, parents, Richard, oh, <laughs> parents, Richard and Doris, and to all her family and friends who traveled to celebrate with us and had the opportunity to, sp to spend lunch with them. And there was travel involved um, both on the East Coast and from the West Coast. And while Marshall is uh, not able to join us in person for today's ceremony, we are pleased to have him join us virtually for today's event. So welcome, Marshall. Uh, the installation of a faculty scholar is a particularly wonderful moment in the life of an institution. It allows us to recognize outstanding junior faculty for their scholarship, research, and entrepreneurial thinking. I also want to recognize the generous support that Marshall Salant has made in the future of our school and in our ability to affect positive change in the world by creating this Faculty Scholar Award. Your generosity makes it possible for us to encourage our best faculty members to continue doing great research, teaching, and translation. Marshall is both a University Trustee Emeritus and a Whiting School of Engineering Advisory Board member, and we are truly proud to call him one of our own. He graduated from Johns Hopkins in 1980 with a bachelor's degree in mathematical sciences and was a member of the first class to graduate from the newly formed Whiting School of Engineering. Marshall went on to earn an MBA from Harvard University and later joined Morgan Stanley, where he served as managing director. Marshall is currently the head of Citi's Alternative Energy Finance Group in the Capital Markets Origination Division. His passion for business, finance, and philanthropic initiatives for fuels for philanthropic initiatives fuels his extraordinary impact on the Whiting School and Hopkins community. In 2000, he established the Salant Student Investment Team in the Center for Leadership Education. The program's portfolio management team includes undergraduates from both the Whiting and Krieger schools, and with guidance from an advisory committee. The program provides students with a hands-on opportunity to manage securities in a $400,000 portfolio that operates as part of the university's endowment. A portion of the profits earned by the portfolio goes towards scholarships, scholarship support for undergraduate students in the Whiting School and the Krieger School of Arts and Sciences. And I can tell you that most years, the students uh, significantly outperform the market. and. Um, would probably be good advisors for all of us in finance. And I'm looking at Susanna's father, who <laughs> might appreciate that fact. Um, in, addition, in addition to establishing the investment team, Marshall has generous, generously supported Hopkins Hillel, the Gilman Hall renovation, and undergraduate scholarships, particularly the Engineering Centennial Scholarship and the Janet and Marshall Salon Scholarship. Marshall's immense generosity, particularly through an in, in, through in establishing the Marshall Salon Faculty Scholar Award, aids faculty members whose innovative work impacts and influences our water, energy, and our everyday lives. Faculty Scholar Awards, like the Marshall Salon Faculty Scholar, not only help us to attract, retain, and in this case, honor the tremendous accomplishments of a faculty member, they also elevate the status of the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering, the Whiting School, and the university as a whole. The ripple effect of this level of support can be seen in the caliber of students attending Hopkins, the amazing array of research, discovery, and innovation taking place today. We are truly and sincerely grateful for Marshall's generosity and commitment to the Whiting School over many years, and especially in this moment. Today, we honor his legacy of philanthropy and generosity and for creating the Marshall Salon Faculty Scholar Award. Now, Susanna, a few people are going to speak on your behalf today, but let me be the first to officially say congratulations on this well-deserved honor. 
We are proud to have you as a member of the Whiting School family, uh, and I am particularly proud to have Susanna as a colleague in my home department of electrical and computer engineering. Sometimes people forget that I still have a faculty appointment in the Whiting School. Um, with that, I'm now pleased to welcome to the podium Pablo Iglesias, Edward J. Schaefer Professor and Interim Department Head of Electrical and Computer Engineering. Pablo. First of all, thank you. Thank you all for coming here uh, to honor Susanna. We in electrical and computer engineering are, are extremely proud of her and, and, very, and feel very fortunate. Now they say that success has many, fail or has many fathers, but failure is an orphan. Now in, in this case, I can honestly say that I would fail a paternity test. And it's not because I don't like what, or I haven't helped or anything for Susanna, but when she was hired 10 years ago, I happened to be on sabbatical in Germany. And so I was totally unaware of what was happening. But occasionally I would get reports from uh, the chair of the search committee at the time, who was Jerry Prince, and you know, talk about different ca candidates and their qualities. And when it got to towards so the, the final three or four that they were looking at, uh, this is how Susanna's several comments that I heard. And one of them was a, this was a singular opportunity for an outstanding candidate in an important area of global interest. Uh, and I think that pretty much sums up what, you know, they got it right, perfectly right 10 years ago. Um, the other thing that I, that uh, we found out is that her, and this was a comment, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you who it was, and it was interim dean at the time, Andrew Douglas. And said that the interview was excellent, demonstrating confidence and ability to engage and articulate an intellectual direction. Now, I can say with confidence that uh, Susanna has confidence when she wants to engage and she wants to articulate a position. Uh, we're fortunate that in addition to, to the great research and teaching that she does, that she works in electrical and computer engineering as one of the associate heads. Uh, and working with her is both a treat but it can also be challenging because she certainly lets uh, us know what she thinks and, uh, and I'm very thankful that she does. Uh, so with that, again, I, I congratulate you, Susanna. Uh, I think you've done wonderfully well uh, and I, I look forward for many more years of, of continued success. So. Okay, well, thank you. So I, you know, I prepared some remarks and the first one says, um, thank you, Pablo, for that in parentheses kind question mark introduction because I wasn't quite sure what direction that would take. But yes, thank you very much, Pablo. I appreciate it. I appreciate all the support you've given me in the various facets of my career to this point. So I really wanna start by of course, thanking Marshall Salant um, for his generosity in creating this position, which is uh, specifically targeted for faculty studying energy and water. So, you know, personally, this may come as no surprise. I think these issues encompass the critical challenge of our time. Um, and Mr. Salant's dedication to the issue of transitioning our energy systems through both his own work uh, in the finance area um, and through the creation of this position um, as well as Johns Hopkins recent investments in founding, for example, the Ralph O'Connor Sustainable Energy Institute, um, are both setting examples really for how both the academic and the finance worlds can play their parts in addressing climate change. And again, this is an issue which is critical for the survival of everyone around the world. So um, as the Dean uh, nicely introduced, um, Marshall Salant has a long history of supporting Hopkins in various capacities, so both in terms of infrastructure building and providing guidance to the university and the School of Engineering in particular. So I am particularly honored to be named the first Marshall Salant faculty scholar um, because of Marshall Salant's legacy in supporting the two critical missions of a university. And those are research, and so part of his support has come in the form of creating this position. Um, and education through several important initiatives. So of his many con uh, contributions to education, I would like to highlight, um, along with the Dean, the founding of the Salon Student Investment Team. 
This, so this is a team that really provides students with hands-on experience managing securities in a portfolio that operates, as you heard, as part of the university's endowment. Um, but particularly, it actually provides scholarship revenue for undergraduate students. So I think you know that this sort of creative and innovative idea actually formed one of the first student managed endowment funds in the country. So I Googled this and confirmed um, and shows true commitment to the idea that universities should actually center students and education in all aspects of their operations. And this includes even their financial operations. So I would now like to pivot to the other university mission that's supported by Marshall Salon, and that's of course research. So I feel honored and grateful um, that Marshall Salon and Hopkins more generally have chosen to invest in the research that my group is conducting in the Whiting School of Engineering. And I'd like to speak briefly about what this faculty scholar position will mean for that work. So my research group um, works broadly on nanomaterials engineering for optoelectronic devices. That's sort of the headline. And we have a specific focus on solar energy harvesting technologies. So materials that are structured on the nanoscale with dimensions a billion times smaller than a meter exhibit fascinating properties um, that diverge really from our everyday intuition due to quantum mechanical effects. So our research explores ways to use these fascinating properties to enable new technologies. We are specifically interested in the problem of generating clean, renewable energy, um, especially in new places and for new applications. So for the past 10 years at Hopkins, this, our work has included technologies such as colloidal quantum dot solar cells, which my students in the audience are very familiar with. So these devices are essentially composed of solar paints or flexible, colorful materials that start their life in the form of a liquid and can then be coated on a variety of surfaces. They're also very lightweight compared to traditional solar cell technology, i.e. those silicon panels that we see on rooftops and in large arrays. So this means that they can one day, and hopefully that day is very soon, <laughs> be used in mobile devices, painted on the sides of buildings or windows, or even cars, trains, and buses to provide clean mobile power for everybody. Um, we've also worked on developing other technologies, including nanoplasmonic metal nanoparticles, which act as enhancers for solar cells, as well as photocatalysis, which is the idea to drive chemical reactions using light instead of heat. So some of these, as well as related materials, are also useful for photosensing applications, and we've done a bit of work um, on building devices that can selectively detect light of different colors for applications in both environmental and ultimately biological monitoring. So in order to push this field that I've sort of been broadly talking about forward, I think there's really three critical ingredients that are needed. So the first ingredient to pursue really our riskier ideas is resources. Um, so the Marshall Salon faculty scholar position will allow us to look at riskier, more speculative ideas and bring in techniques from other fields, both by providing resources, but also importantly, the credibility to take on these high, these risky but high upside projects um, that are otherwise difficult to fund through the sort of traditional sources. So these projects include looking at new types of materials. So for example, two dimensional materials um, that are formed from sheets that are really only one atom thick, as well as new portable energy harvesting methods. Um, for example, combining solar energy harvesting um, with electrical energy storage into one integrated system or making a so-called photo battery. Um, and applying new techniques from disparate fields. So for example, we're currently trying to use machine learning methods that can help us solve inverse design problems and simplify measurement processes, ultimately allowing for faster materials um, and device development for these new technologies. So the first ingredient I think for success in sort of pushing the field forward is resources. And the second ingredient that's really allowed us to explore new fields, especially as well as new ideas is collaborations. So I personally have been lucky to work with many great collaborators at Hopkins. And I really think this is the most important role that Hopkins has played in the research. And that's connecting my research group with great collaborators and connecting me personally with great mentors. And of course, there's been some overlap between those two categories. So I want to just briefly mention some of these collaborators and mentors because of the impact that they've had on our research. And you know, there's certainly many others as well. And I apologize if I leave anyone out. 
So starting with collaborators, I should mention Art Bragg, who's a professor in the chemistry department here. He was one of my very first collaborators at Hopkins. He, we were sort of the, the co-applicants for the first grant I ever got. Um, and he remains a collaborator and a friend to this day. I want to point out Howard Katz, who served as my official um, out of department mentor, but also has acted as a collaborator and, and his input has always been very valuable to me. Um, my research group is currently collaborating with Professor Sarah Thoy in chemistry and Professor Yayuan Liu in chemical and biomolecular engineering on this exciting new photo batteries project that was actually just um, it was actually photo batteries as well as solar powered carbon capture that was just funded by a Hopkins discovery award. Um, and I should mention also Paulette Clancy, who's a computational expert here in chemical and biomolecular engineering. Um, so we're working with her through a partnership with Morgan State University in Baltimore on some of the two dimensional materials. work. So I've also been lucky enough to have many unofficial mentors, so both in electrical and computer engineering, as well as other departments. Um, so some of the electrical and computer engineering faculty have given me valuable advice and sort of generally supported our research, um, include Pablo Iglesias, of course, who introduced me, um, Andreas Andreu, Ralph Ichian Cummings, Jin Kang, um, Jacob Kurgan, and, and Amy Foster. And of course, there's many others, um, but I've also been lucky to receive unofficial mentoring from those outside the department, including Denise Game, Jonah Erlebacher, and Ben Schaefer. I should also mention the two institutes that my group has been privileged enough to be part of. So the first is the Ralph O'Connor Sustainable Energy Institute, or ROSI, which has connected me with great colleagues across the university, sort of interested in all aspects of renewable energy, even beyond sort of the engineering aspects. So ROSI was founded two years ago with a gift from the O'Connor family and significant support from the Whiting School of Engineering. And I would particularly like to thank Ben Schaefer, Ben Link, and the great staff at Rosie for their tireless work to set up this new institute and get it rolling. It has been so exciting to watch it grow and participate in so many new initiatives through it, including the creation of a new minor in energy program for our undergraduates. And finally, my group has also received great support through the Hopkins Extreme Materials Institute, and I especially want to thank KT Ramesh and the excellent staff of HEMI for providing us with critical support, especially when I was early in my career as an assistant professor. So that brings me, I said there were three ingredients, that brings me to the final and probably the most important ingredient for any successful research program, and that, as we all know, is students. So the actual trick to success in research is not really a big mystery, it relies on having great students. Um, they are the people who do the real work, they come up with the best ideas, and their enthusiasm keeps us all going through good times and bad. So I've been lucky enough to have great graduate students and undergraduates involved in my research group over the past 10 years. So there's too many to mention them all, but I will call out the current group. Um, so Lulin, Sreyas, Serene, Danvini, Jumbo, Ijun, Dana, Ikian, Isaac, and Chris. Thanks for all your hard work, your brilliant ideas, and most of all, your sense of humor that kept us going through the pandemic and hopefully will keep us going far beyond. So I hear that there's really good food at these events. So I don't want you keep it you I don't want to keep you from it any longer. Thanks to those who are here to celebrate, especially my family and friends who traveled for this event. Most appreciated. And thank you again to Marshall Salant for giving us a reason to gather in this way and for his support of renewable energy research at Hopkins. Now let's eat. So thank you, Susanna. Thank you for those wonderful remarks. Um, I want to thank everyone for being here today, especially the friends and family, as I said, who traveled fairly far to get here. Um, and again, congratulations, Susanna. It is really a privilege to count you as a colleague in the school. Congratulations. And um, as Susanna said, there is a reception. One thing you will know about academics, you can tell how important the honoree is by the quality of the food. And you will see, we really think very highly of Susanna. So thank you all for being here. Thank you.